Surgical treatments of the spine encompass a broad array of options. And, and people have often said in the past, oh, I don't want to have spinal surgery. I've heard that that's a horrible a result from that. And the, and the answer is, that absolutely is not true. In the old days, when we didn't have a lot of options, that could have been true. But nowadays, in the, in the past 15 years, the world of spinal surgery has evolved in, in leaps and is now a truly well-defined subspecialty. And under the hands of modern spinal specialists, if surgery is performed and the proper surgery is selected by competent surgeons, then great results can, can happen. I'm going to talk about some of the different areas of, of treatment that we have. And when we really break it down, the things that we can do to the spine from a surgical standpoint are we can decompress a nerve where we actually go in and unpinch a nerve. We can fuse the spine where we actually bond one bone to the next bone so that we stop motion at that segment. We can combine the first two where we decompress the spine to free up the nerve and then fuse it or stabilize it in that position. We can go ahead and do motion preserving operations where we actually put in an artificial disc or a dynamic device which allows to maintain the motion but repairs the torn ligaments and structures. And the last area would be to do a intravertebral or intradiscal stabilization and this would be if we would actually put uh, cement or, or uh, some substance into a bone that was fractured such as a vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty where we actually try to put a needle into the disc, restore the height of that bone with cement and stabilize it inside one bone so we're not doing anything to the adjacent structures. And the same is true in the disc where we can go into the disc space and either try to heal the disc itself if there's a tear or put an artificial nucleus in there to try to replace the degenerative one that was present. So these are all things that we can do to the spine. So let's talk about laminectomy or decompression. A decompression operation, as we said earlier, is to take a pinch off a nerve and, and relieve a nerve. So we're going to go to our model here and look at the back of the spine. The lamina is the back covering of the spine. And the lamina serves a purpose to, number one, protect the spinal canal, but more importantly, to act as a surface for muscular attachment. It also supports the spinous process, which is a large knob that comes out the back of the spine. So those are there to support muscles. If a nerve is being pinched in the spinal canal, now remember in the spinal canal is that area behind the vertebral body, in front of the lamina, in between the pedicles. So if there's something pinching the nerve in there, and a common uh, occurrence for that would be a disc herniation. So just like this big red knob on the spine, but in the side, inside the canal, if that was pinching a nerve. Then what we could do as a surgeon, if the person had failed non-operative treatment, would be to go in in a minimally invasive fashion to unpinch that. When we talk about fusing the spine, traditionally spines were fused by laying bone graft on the back of the spine, on the lamina and spinous process. We found later that it actually healed better if we laid the bone across the transverse process, which are the knobs off to the side of the spine. So traditional fusions done from the back or posterior were done by laying bone graft on the outside of the spine. And that bone graft traditionally was harvested from the pelvis, so we'd actually scrape bone off the pelvis transplant it up there and use it. And that's something we rarely do anymore because taking that bone from the pelvis is extremely painful. In fact, 25% of the people that have it taken from the pelvis often have chronic pain as a result of the bone graft harvest. So something that fortunately due to modern technology that we helped develop, there are ways to avoid that. 